Well, good morning, friends. I know what you're thinking. Wow, Don, you're really uh, knocking them dead here with the uh, with the post. This is like three in the last two days. I have in my hands here an email that I received from a gentleman named Ron. I'm not going to tell you his last name because he, when I asked him if I could use his name, he said, sure, use Ron. I kind of took that to meant uh, don't use my last name. He asked me, he said he had a, I hope you had a great Christmas. I certainly appreciate your videos and have a few topics I hope you can address. And I started going down the list and counted one, two, three, four, five, six, ten of them. Ten questions he had for me. A perfect Q&A. So I thought I would address this for him and for you so that everybody can benefit from this. This is not a regular Q&A. This is Ron's. Q&A, and I thank you, Ron. I don't know where you're from. Your email address is a Bell South address, so I assume you're probably somewhere in the southern states, maybe Texas. Who knows? But anyway, I'm going to answer all these as soon as I come back. Hey! Hello there. So here we go. I, I love this. This is, you people just amaze me. You come up with some of the best questions I've ever had. I, I can't imagine. And by the way, I'm now working on QA14. QA14 is in the works. And we've only done QAs 1 through 8. I published 8 yesterday and got some great comments and responses from that. And I'm, I, I'm up to QA14. I'm going to have to start doing a couple of these per week, I think, so that uh, people that are looking for an answer can get them soon, okay? So anyway, number one question that Ron asked, are, certain vegetables we should, are there certain vegetables we should avoid at the risk of getting an infection? If so, what are they? I have heard stories about this. I've heard stories about people eating salads from different restaurants around town and getting sick, sick their stomach. There are, I, I, I can't imagine, I, I know there's a logical reason for this, but they tell you wash all your vegetables when you get home. I, there, you can fill your sink up with water and put some vinegar in it, I've been told. There are chemicals or little bottles of treatment that you can buy at Mega Maxi that's in the vegetable section that you can pour in there. Me personally, I use this stuff right here. It's called disinfected TUS Virtus 99%. There, it's right there. I'll let the camera focus on it. Maybe you can read it if I get my fingers out of the way. But this is just a spray that I use. And I just like I just take my like my apples and Stuff like that. Not anything I'm going to peel, I don't worry about it. But anything that I'm going to eat, you know, like vegetables and stuff, salad stuff, you know, <laughs> takes care of it. That's all I do. And somebody asked me, actually asked me one time, so after you spray this, then do you rinse it off? I looked at them like, really? Rinse it off with the water that's coming out of the tap? Is that what you mean? Or rinse it off with the water that you pay for in the bottle or you spray with this and then wipe it off. That's what I do. I thought that was kind of funny. Rinse it off. So you spray it with this to get those bad stuff off the fruit. Or this and, and the bad stuff off the fruit and then you're gonna wash it with water that you're not supposed to drink. Okay, just spray and wipe it off, okay? If you are going to rinse it off with water, then rinse it off with, obviously with treated water. Some people have reverse osmosis systems in their kitchens, and they can do that. So I'm not trying to be sarcastic or anything, but it's a, it's a good question, Ron. I, I, I Personally, I have not been sick from eating anything here. I haven't been sick from drinking water or anything. The worst thing that's happened to me since I've been here is I got a cold, and I did a video about it. So, question number two. What is the name of the medication you have to take, and is it a prescription item? I take metropolol, 
It's a blood pressure pill. I take 150 milligram pill per day. That's the only medicine I take. I don't take anything besides beer and wine. So, I, I, and can I get that here? I don't know, but you know, Dr. Garcia, my primary care physician that comes to my apartment when I need her, uh, tells me that I can get whatever I need for blood pressure here. I'm not worried about it. Um, they probably have metropolol here. I, I, one of these days, I'll just walk in the pharmacy and ask them, and I'll probably just buy a box of them, too, while I'm there, probably without a prescription. Number three, I know the water in Ecuador is not safe to drink. Well, not all water. The water, they, they tell me that you can drink the water right out of the river in Cuenca, and I'm going to find out in a couple of weeks because I'm going to be there. I know the water in Ecuador is not safe to drink. Do you know anything about a central water filtration system that you can install in your home or know of a company that does this? I don't know of any particular company that does it, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a link in the description to Mark Bradbury's uh, Friends and Amigos page in Manabi, M Manabi, Monte and Manabi, and in his site, his Facebook site, there is a file section. I believe there's some information about uh, water purification in there. They do have, there are companies here that sell under the sink water purification systems. There are old systems, and I'll tell you, I even, I had one in the United States, and I just got my drinking water right out of this spigot on top of the sink. It's perfect. It's the best way to go. You don't have to buy a bottle of water. There's nothing wrong with buying a bottle of water, but who likes carrying, I got tired of carrying cases of bottled water inside back home and here I buy these five gallon jugs and I mean they're very cheap and affordable but they're heavy I can't pick one of them up so I have to go get somebody to help me pick it up put it on my counter it weighs 50 pounds but yeah they're here that's not going to be a problem you'll be able to find water purification systems without any problems okay number four are you aware of any beautification projects going on in Monta or any proposed for the future? If so, what are they? A contact of mine told me it was very dirty, but I don't know specifically what areas of Monta she is referring to. There's a place being built not too far from here called Grand Bay. It's a four building condo project. It's right on the ocean. There is beautification projects going on all over Monta. They're building a huge park up in Tarkey area. That's going to be like the best in Ecuador. There are, oh my God, if you go up and down Flavio Reyes, down Restaurant Row, there are new buildings being built as we speak. I think most of them are probably going to be restaurants, but I noticed that the other day when I was walking to Top Dental, I noticed a brand new pharmacy that just popped up, you know? And so, yeah, to answer your question, everything, this, this place is a developing city and it is under constant development and beautification projects are going on all over the place. I tried to find some specific information about specific beautification projects to put in the description. I couldn't find anything, but take my word for it, please. I'm, th there are, okay? There's a lot of beautification going on. Number five, are the beaches clean? What beaches have you found to be the nicest? Well, the only beach that I've been on, you know, particularly on, on foot, is the, the beach here in Monta, Mercia Lago. Mercia Lago. Mercia, Mercia, the accent is supposed to be on the IE. Mercia, Mercia de Lago. I think I said that right. I'm sure somebody will tell me if I didn't. But it's a nice beach. It's not a white sandy beach like you'd see in the Caribbean or northern, the the... Panama region of Florida, the north uh, western region, you know, on the Gulf side. Uh, beautiful white beaches there. We have some here in Ecuador. Uh, I've been on the beach in uh, Santa Marinita. It's a nice beach. I've been on the beach in San Lorenzo. It's a fishing beach, a lot of fishing boats and everything. But the beaches are clean. I, I don't see any problem. I'm, I've walked up and down this beach all the time, and yes, it's very clean. There's nothing. Nothing to be worried about. Number six, have you experienced food poisoning in Monta? If so, what did you take? I have not experienced food poisoning myself, but I have a neighbor that did, and she got it real bad. 
it, it, well, I take it back. It wasn't for food poisoning. She got sick from the water. I can't tell you how she got this water because it's private, but she got tap water into her system and it, she had to have an IV. The doctor came in and put an IV in her for two or three days in a row. Food poisoning, I know several people around here that said, oh, I got food poisoning. I don't know what they did about it, you know? I, I don't really think that food poisoning is a problem here, especially if you buy your own food and fix it at home. There is probably always a chance. I would be more concerned about eating at some of the little local sidewalk uh, eateries. I don't know what you call those, little mom and pop, you know, uh, cooking little tiny sidewalk restaurants, I guess. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. I haven't tried them, but I mean, I, I walk by them and oh my God, I can smell. The stuff they're making, it smells wonderful, but no, I haven't experienced any food poisoning. I don't really know that many people that have. I know some th they think they have, but I don't think they really think they had a stomach ache. Number seven, if you decide to live in Monta, do you plan on buying or continue to rent? Me personally, I'm going to continue to rent. I doubt that I'm going to buy I'm 70 years old. I don't want to buy a piece of property here and maintain it and be responsible for it. I mean, I like I like the idea of, of renting. I have enough money in my budget that I can pay, I can afford to pay for my rent and let somebody else take care of the problems. Like air conditioning, filters need to be replaced, the refrigerator stopped working, my hot water heater, you know? I don't want to deal with all that stuff. I'm not, personally, I'm not going to buy I don't even want to buy, even on an, from an investor's perspective, I don't. I put my money in CDs, and that's easy, you know. And then somebody will come back and say, yeah, well, you can lose that. <clears throat> well, yeah, well, I can lose my house, too. Earthquake can knock it down, but, you know. But, no, I'm going to continue to rent. Number nine. Oh, what happened to eight? Oh, my God. Who wrote this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine questions and not ten. I'm sorry. Ron, you owe me a question, buddy. All right? You owe me a question. You went from seven to nine. It's in your email. See it right here. Seven to nine. Okay? So, please, fork it out, please, all right? Number nine, since we don't have eight. I'm aware cars are very expensive in Ecuador. Can you tell me what car brand names are there? I wrote some down. Kia, Chevy, Feng Dong. That's Chinese, believe it or not. <laughs> I think. It may not be Chinese, but I'm betting you that it is. Ford, VW, Toyota. I've seen just about every kind of car you can think of here. And the local cars here, the new cars that are imported, not from the United States, but the cars that are imported from like South Korea, China, um, uh, Brazil, you know, they, they're all pretty fairly reasonably priced. They're not that much more expensive as a new car would be in the United States, you know. I've seen Nissans here. I've seen Toyotas. I've seen, I, I, I saw a Ford uh, Raptor here not too long ago. Almost ran over me. I was walking down the street. Came pulling out of the parking garage and almost got me. But... Anyway, yeah, there's there uh, the pictures that you're seeing I took in the mall. This is just a couple of cars that I shot when I was over there the other day. One's a truck, one's a car. The Centrion is here. Citron, Citron, remember the old Citron cars? Citron, they're here. Used cars is a big market here, and used cars are expensive. They hold their value. You can buy a car here, and and you can buy a used car here. $5,000 and two or three years later, you can probably sell it for $5,000. That's what I've been told anyway. So anyway, number 10. In your opinion, what is the nicest area in Monta to live? Well, I have to say probably the nicest area that I've seen is called Ciudad del Mar. And it, when you pull into Ciudad del Mar, it's over that way, which is... Uh, west of, here, of where I'm at here and it kind of reminds me of 
some of the pictures that I've seen from Greece. Uh, where all the white built, all the buildings are white, and you see them in contrast with the blue sea. It's a beautiful area, really nice gated community. That's called Ciudad del Mar. You can buy uh, homes in there. You can rent apartments. It's a really nice area. The the second one I'd say is Barbecue. The only thing I don't like about Barbecue is that it's a very popular place, and on the weekends there's a lot of partying going on. The streets are a little bit noisy. <clears throat> That's where Poseidon is. And I'm, Marriott, Mykonos, and all of that area. The, here where I live, here, I don't really know what we call this area. I just tell people I'm by the mall. I wouldn't say it's the n nicest area, but it's nice, it's very nice. It's got a great view, as you can see. Uh, this is probably, besides Ciudad del Mar, this is probably one of the quieter places around here. So, but I'd, I'd, I'd say Ciudad del Mar is pre pretty probably one of the best and then of course there's new development going on everywhere so Don best to you for the new year and all the best to you same thing to you Ron I appreciate it that's it folks a little short video here I told Ron I was going to do this last week but I got so tied up with some of the other QAs Ron you owe me another question okay and I will answer as best as I can I wish everybody a happy new year please be safe don't go out and do something stupid tonight. Go out and watch fireworks. Don't drink and drive. Please, don't drink and drive. And if you're going to get around a bunch of crowd of people, please put a mask on. All right? Save yourself. And if you don't believe in all that, then fine, keep it to yourself. But I wish everybody a happy new year, and I hope that we all have a better year in 2022 than we did in 2021. Ciao.